almost like we just said goodbye and we're saying hello so soon again. So with the continuing on with the theme with the S2000, the spoonification, spoonifying, I like spoonification. Continuing on with the spoonification of the S2000 today, we'll be doing the rigid collars along with changing out something I'm a little unsure of the authenticity of it being an official spoon product. So let's get into the spoonification of Selena. All right, so we're gonna start with the easiest of what we got going on today. That's gonna to be the Reservoir X locks. And I got these at a Honda Day probably five, six years ago. And for 10 bucks, pretty sure they weren't real spoon. So we're just gonna replace those with the official spoon locks. These we'll probably just throw on the CRX just because we have them. I already spent the money, might as well use them, right? Yeah, these even feel better than those ones. But that could also just be age. But, why not? I got them for a pretty good deal. Let's replace them both. Alright, now that we've got the S2000 up in the air to do this front subframe, let's take a look at the rigid collars themselves. So, they come with printed instructions in Japanese. They tell you which ones you need for the front. And they're actually kind of already prepackaged, laid out how the directions describe them. So these are going to be the 14 millimeter ones over here. The obviously bigger hole, you can see. And then the 12 millimeter ones are right here, the smaller ones. And then same for the back, you got the bigger 14. And the two 12s that the back instructions call for. So let's get into doing that and hopefully the wind doesn't blow away all my stuff here and throw them in. All right, taking another look at the instructions, they're actually laid out in the order they go in. So the two big ones are going to be for the two 19 millimeter bolts on the subframe. And then the smaller one's going to be for the 17 millimeter bolt there. Just try to brainstorm away how we can do this underneath here. You can see I should probably source a replacement subframe, get it powder coated and replace this one. But that's for another day. I think we're just going to loosen the bolts a little bit, let it hang, see how far they come down and work one by one like that. All right, you're gonna start by removing the three 14 millimeter bolts. It's gonna be one here, one here, and then one there. So you can remove this bracket and then get to the 19 millimeter bolt up here. So I already did that on the other side, took the bolt out to see how far they come down. And it looks like we may be able to just loosen them just enough to where we could slide the rigid collar in without having to drop the entire subframe. So let's get into it. Alright, so this is what we came up with. Piece of wood on the oil pan. You can see the spoon oil drain plug there. Um, that way have the piece of wood there so it distributes the weight evenly so, and also so it doesn't punch right through the oil pan. We're going to continue backing off these bolts Oops, sorry for the lighting there. Continue backing off the subframe bolts, and then we should be able to slide the rigid collars in right in between the subframe as it comes down. So let's try it out and see how it goes.
All right, looks like it did exactly what I expected. And that's more than enough space to slide in one of the rigid collars. Let me grab one just to be sure. All right, looks like we gotta let it come down a little bit more and that's okay. So let's, let's do that and then put it all back together. All right, let's try it again. See if we back the bolts off enough. All right, so it looks like it came down enough for the passenger side for the rigid collars to fit in. So we'll just pop those in there, back the bolts off one at a time, add the rigid collar in, tighten it up just a little bit, and then do the other side. All right, so these go the fatter side down into the subframe. Like that, and then when you put the bolt through, It'll snug it up and bring everything together, as you see there. So, we're gonna do the other ones. That one there, this one back here, you can't really see in the frame. And then we'll start snugging these ones up. As a reminder, this does come with anti-seize and you wanna use these on these bolts because as you can see, mine is starting to oxidize. And that's also due to the fact that we are in New England and everything rust up here that's Honda. So just make sure you put some anti-seize on the threads and then a little on the actual rigid collars themselves around here and inside. All right, so let's get back to putting everything together. So these do get torqued in, the 219s in the front, this one right here, and this one back here. Go to 84 foot-pounds, let's hit that with the torque wrench just to be sure. Okay. And then the back one is 43 pounds, the 17 millimeter. Pretty sure we tighten those already way past 43. Let's just check this one anyways, just to be sure. And here it is. Now, let me hit this one with the gun real quick. Just so it snugs it up, because that bolt was really long. So it might have a long way to go too. And of course, as soon as I take the ratchet off, it's all the way. Yep. All right. All right, so we finished with the front. Ended up throwing on the front lip because it just looks so naked and I wanted to change up the look. Now we're getting on to the back. And it's probably gonna be about the same. We'll probably do it the same way as we did the front, and then that'll be it. All right, so got the back up in the air, same concept as the front, use the jack on the diff as the lift point, bring it up and down, 
But then I see this guy here. Uh, that one makes me a little nervous. It's really orange, very rusty. And if that breaks, gonna have a really bad day. So as I was saying, it's a little rusty, a little orangey. And we're gonna hit it with some freeze off. CRC, give me free stuff. And hopefully it comes off. So let's just hit it up there, in there, a little there. And let it sit for a little bit. All right, so the bolts actually came out fairly easy. The impact gun doesn't play no games with them. Got them all out. And we're just gonna do the same thing. Pry on the subframe a little bit, slide the rigid collar in, tighten it back up, and then we'll call this one done. All right, so similar to the front, they are lined up in the order they go. We have the 14 millimeter one that goes on the bolt with the 19 millimeter head. That one right there. Then we have the two 12 millimeters that go on the 17 here and 17 in the middle there. So let's do those, put some anti C's on them and finish up for the day. All right, so there we have it. We got the rigid collars in. It's so that one, I think you can see that one. It's the tiny little metallic glare right there. The same for the other side. I'm gonna snug these up, torque them down. Now we're done for the, for the day. All right, just like the front, 84 pounds for the 19 millimeter. There you go. And 43 for the 17. All right, and it's done. Oh, great. Broke a tripod. Anyways, so there they are. Rigid collars in. Front and back. Alright, so you made it to this part of the video. Thank you for watching. That's how you install the rigid collars using simple hand tools. Anyone who works on their own car should have jack, jack stands, and a simple Harbor Freight socket set. The impacts do help. Absolutely not necessary but they make life easy. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It's free, it helps me out, it helps more content. And we'll see you next time on Mojo Garage.